This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 610 for July 1st, 2019. Whoops. Dark Souls. You die. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me is Monkey Senior. Hey. Uh, we were... So we're down two people uh, this week. Moon is off on vacation with his wife. He'll be back next week. Uh, and Nimp works third shift and got sick afterwards. And I think he took a nap and I I can't find him. So <laughs> we... Unresponsive. But, yeah, we're just going to... It's going to be a, a chill two-person uh, show this week. Uh, if you are missing Moon Pier, uh the brand new episode of All Do- Old Dog New Flicks uh, is up on Patreon. Patreon.com slash E1M1, the ones or numbers. Uh, it's at the $5 level. Uh, it's a pretty good episode. And don't forget, even if you're not a patron, you can go vote for the next movie that's going to... Uh, that they're going to watch. It's all Arnold Schwarzenegger all the time you get three three choices uh moon would probably want me to remember to tell you that there's only one right choice so <laughs> go go vote appropriately you don't have to be a, a patron to vote patreon.com slash e1m1 and i think that's it for boring business stuff so let's get into uh, monkey what have you been playing this past week all right so we'll go from least played to most played so okay uh first up cadence of hyrule Oh, yeah. uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> I just I love saying the whole name of that. 2019's longest title. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I just want to point out. Um, I just wanted to say back when it first released, I finished the stories within like two days. Okay. So now I'm playing permadeath runs. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know that was yeah. an option. Yeah. So. Uh, when you start the game, you can either just click game start or custom settings, mm. and then custom settings has a a bunch of different like permadeath and uh, single single character runs, and I think you can turn off the the beat, right? On that one, like make it just strictly turn based. Have you tried that mode? Uh, yeah. Um, for me, it's really easy oh, okay yeah because like, because i know all of the enemy patterns and stuff you know like from right. playing crypt of the naked answer so it was just i was breathing breezing through it the uh, first time i did that i've heard people say that it almost turns it into like a turn-based strategy game like yeah. some people are saying like into the breach um that that sounds kind of fun also yeah it like i said it, it was really fun but it was really easy mm-hmm. <laughs> uh it, it's so when you do those custom settings and the the one in particular I want to do, it's implemented very weirdly. Okay. So I want to do single character, random character permadeath, right? Oh, okay, okay. So when you when you do that, you it gives you a character, say Link, mm-hmm. and then you're you're going through, and if you die, there's whenever you're doing um permadeath it, it just says uh quick restart or quick game oh, okay if you choose quick restart you would think they would do the exact same settings right like right random character single character. yeah just like permadeath roll permadeath, roll right? it again it does the same thing for everything except randomizing the character so you always get whatever character you started with oh weird so like, yeah when when we I, I did it like five times in a row and each time was Link and I was like, this is weird. I, I should be getting someone else. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, and yeah, it reminds me of something that drives me crazy about fighting games. We were just talking about CEO. Um, one thing that drives me crazy about most fighting games and one of the reasons why I love Dead or Alive is if I pick random character, random stage, like both fighters pick random character and we pick random stage. When I hit try again or like another match or whatever their option is yeah. for that 
I want you to randomize all that stuff again. Like, I don't want to get yeah. the same two characters in a random stage. Like, I want, I just want to keep hitting replay and just getting whatever I get. And yeah. Most um, most fighting games don't do that, and it drives me crazy. Yeah, it's, that's like the only bad thing I have to say about Gate <laughs> yeah. Spiral, though. Yeah, I, like I, that I, one particular thing is. That'd be nice if they would patch it eventually. I, w- I wonder how many other people are saying like. Hey, I really want to do like a genuine random run, uh, yeah. sort of over and over again. But other than that, the game is great. Uh, permadeath story mode works really well because you can just you can choose either Link or Zelda. So that's what I've been doing so right now. Mm. Like just I choosing one of them. But yeah, the, if if you don't haven't yet, go get Cadence of Hyrule. Yeah, and I cannot wait for the day that it comes on uh, We Rogue like it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it. It's definitely in our backlog, and it's gonna rank high. <laughs> and I, I, the recommendation that that I'm having too for Cadence of Hyrule is, if you like that and you haven't played Necrodancer, go also by Necrodancer. It's it's harder than uh, Hyrule is, but there's more stuff to it. And if you like Necrodancer, and you haven't played Cadence of Hyrule, go pick up Cadence of Hyrule. You'll yeah. it, it's easier, but uh, it's it's really great. Uh, how many? I meant to ask. How many playable characters are there? Are there some unlockable ones right now? Three. No, okay. No unlockable. So oh, Link, Zelda, and Cadence. And Cadence, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Hopefully they put more characters. That would be cool. Like, yeah, it'd be fun to play as like a one of the spear guys or like. Yeah. Like Mifa. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah Mifa's my favorite character in Breath of the Wild. So. Yeah, like, it, there's a whole bunch of even like Sheik. Like, you could. Yeah. It, there's a ton of even just uh, protagonists you could put in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my next game uh, just came out two days ago, I think. Mm. Uh, Mario Maker Two. Oh, I want to play this so bad. Yeah. So I never played Mario Maker One. Uh, yeah, I didn't and, either. I haven't played a 2D Mario in so long. I have no <laughs> idea what my last one was. So this game made me realize, one, I'm terrible at 2D Mario. Okay. <laughs> and two, I'm terrible at level design. Okay. <laughs> so both things that revolve <laughs> this game revolves around. It's like the, the so two things this game does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so what I've been doing for the past two days is... Uh, so they have a endless endless challenge, I believe it's called. Oh, okay. And they have they have four different uh, difficulties: so easy, normal, expert, and I think the last one's super expert. Okay. So I've been playing easy, and it was it was kind of too easy. I I got to ten, and I'm like, you know, what? I'm just gonna stop because it was it was so easy like they were just giving me auto scroll levels that like you don't have to move you don't have to touch the controller to win right and like, like that's some not of the what ones you're there are, for like just straight shot to the end like you just walk and some were filled with just completely filled with stars so it's like there's no oh. challenge in them right <laughs> right <laughs> so I went to normal 2 is my highest <laughs> <laughs> a little more difficult <laughs> a little tiny bit more difficult man, well what the so hell is super expert gonna be man yeah right <laughs> <laughs> and yeah so actually i guess i should say the way the endless challenge works is you it begins you with five lives okay. and you you just have that uh you can gain up to three lives in each level so oh, like, okay yeah you if if you don't die at all, then you gain lives throughout the run. Right. So yeah, it, I I feel like it's so embarrassing that I can't get past two stages. <laughs> right. It's for like normal. It's like sleepy like, kids uh, difficulty, and then whoops, Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and hopefully, I can get better at it. I did do. Uh, I did make a single level. It's mm. a random level that like. I just put a bunch of platforms with a bunch of red Koopas that, yeah, it was very random. And right. I just did it to get, because the, you actually have costumes for your me. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Like it, you don't play as your me, but you, people can see it in 
like whenever you uh create a level and your your me like appears there like he'll, this is your they call it maker oh okay oh there, yeah. is that the little like circle icon there on yeah. when you when you're looking at your level code yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay okay but yeah you you get stuff for making a level so i made a really crappy level right <laughs> finished it Got real quick <laughs> yeah uh if you do want to play it just hit me up on twitter or discord and yeah I'll send you the id I right <laughs> uh i'll save that one for last and so at the beginning of the week after you told me i could be on this mm -hmm. um i wanted to play something new i guess and i i wanted to play something that had to do with keyboard and mouse because okay. i haven't played one of those in a really long time and I remembered I had Game Pass. So I was like, oh, mm. let me go look at that. And the uh, the UI for the, the Xbox app, whatever it's called on Windows. Yeah. It's, I feel like it's really good. It, and, it's really nice. Yeah. So they have, if, if you scroll down a little bit on the Game Pass section, they have a surprise me. Oh, so I, okay. Yeah. I, I Well, I had to click it a few times because they were giving me like Forza and right hellblade and crackdown like i played gears games. one <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so eventually i came up on it's called orwell keeping an eye on you okay this game is super cool <laughs> okay i haven't heard about this yeah it's uh let's see so the first line of the description says quote big brother has arrived and it's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm, yeah. I'm interested already. It that that description is sums it up pretty well. So uh, the game is or Orwell is a security program made so the <laughs> the, the nation is actually like the name of the country you're in is actually called the nation <laughs> okay and the government is the party oh okay <laughs> so the the party passed a bill called the safety bill uh. <laughs> <laughs> to you know like increase safety throughout the nation and uh orwell is a part of that it's a security program that uh basically tracks people's online um activity oh okay so you're you're the person controlling orwell oh and then, interesting and you have like this this i guess handler who like gives you i guess kind of hints and uh like says how relevant the things you do are mm. so the first case is to solve a bombing in the freedom plaza <laughs> <laughs> and so you're you're snooping around the activity of someone named Cassandra Watergate. So just this person who had previous uh, criminal activity. Oh, okay. So it it already flagged her as a potential yeah. suspect. So you're like looking into her life, but looking into what she's doing now, what she has been doing, and stuff. Mm. So the way the game plays. So on the left is your um suspect and any details you upload to orwell and on the right side so it's so you cycle between three tabs it's called uh, reader listener and insider mm -hmm. so the reader is when you're on the reader tab you have like news articles websites blog posts like uh, anything okay. that um your handler gives says like oh this this might help you here and like all your text-based stuff yeah yeah. And uh in the listener it's uh text conversations. So like recorded conversations between that the person and like their friends or something. Mm. So it's it's both uh like text message and recorded calls and oh, Okay. It, it it's all you it's all readable like there's no voice acting. So like it's not um, like you're picking up a Bioshock audio log or anything. Right. It's just like, right. yeah, you, like you you ha watch it happen in real time. But 
once the conversations ended, you can scroll through it and stuff. Oh, okay. And then on the 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 insider tab is, um, you can look at that person's desktop or like their their computer. Oh, okay. You can look through like their their trash folder, their uh recently visited websites, their personal files, and stuff like that. Ooh. So whenever you find something relevant, it it's like highlighted, and then you you can click and drag that into Orwell, and then it'll update that person's profile. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it, it's cool because not everything is relevant. Like, at one point you're on someone's dating profile, right? And then it highlights like, oh, interested in men and uh, like likes guitar and stuff, you know? Right. So those aren't quite relevant, so right. you can just block those out. But yeah, mo- most of the stuff is fairly relevant to the case and yeah all you're doing is like getting to know these people and uploading stuff to orwell and it's it's a really cool game (laughs) i feel like it's it would be a really good game for uh game club yeah it yeah it's the list right now (laughs) (laughs) and the names in this and like stuff the the text is so funny because like the government's the party but, right freedom and, plaza <laughs> yeah and uh like they make some pretty funny references like um so at one point you're on a band page and they have their album and their their track list it goes up to seven or one two through seven mm-hmm. and the seventh one the track name is nation army so when you read it, it's right. Seven Nation Army. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. That that game sounds entirely my jam. I'm yeah. gonna have to I'm gonna have to check that out. And it's on Game Pass PC, so Yeah. Hey. It's free ish. Yeah. Uh and then my last game, Final Fantasy V. Yeah. You pop in on the This is your first four job fiesta, right? Uh it's I think I did it two years previous. Oh, okay. But I've never finished it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've I've always gotten to like the third crystal or the fourth crystal and then just stop for whatever reason. It's like when the game starts getting really hard, there's like that, that first big difficulty spike after the yeah. third crystal. And I'm just like, uh I can I can finish this later. And yeah. I never do. <laughs> uh it's interesting because just before we started recording, I finished it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I finally beat him. First victory. Alex death. Yeah, so that was that was pretty great. Uh, for everyone on the show, what was your your party? Uh, so it was knight, berserker, ninja, and samurai. Yeah, samurai helps good stuff. so much. Yeah, Just throw money at everyone. <laughs> yep, it's so good. It's it's so funny because I think. Like Bard and Chemist, there's like uh, uh, Beastmaster. Like, there's a couple of, of jobs when you first look at them, and you're like, Samurai, like, okay, great. Like, you can use katanas. And you unlock that Gil Toss, Zenag- Zenagage, and some of the other versions. Yeah. And you're like, oh, cool, I can throw money. Like, whatever. And the first time you throw and it does like 135,000 damage, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> that's <It's> so- great. <laughs> it's, that's all I did for. Uh, Neo X Death and regular X Death. Well, pre tree X Death. Right. <laughs> it's so, that's such a weird, like, he, he turns into a tree. Really. It's so, it's <laughs> like, it's, it's so weird because there's like, they, they explain it in the story and some stuff, but like, I, I, X Death starts out as a really cool villain. Like, he's this really big dude and he just wants to put the two worlds together. And like, you're sort of like, all right, like, yeah, I can, I can sort of get it. Like, smush the worlds together like you that's fine and then next thing you know he's like uh a uh splinter in Crylie's hand and he's like popping out it's like ah man x death maybe you lost me a little bit here buddy (laughs) yeah yeah so but the story in that game is is pretty goofy as it is so yeah yeah i mean it's it's an old game so (laughs) yeah i can i'll let it slide yeah yeah Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that's that's all I've been playing. Uh, I my Final Fantasy V Forge Out Fiesta, my first run went really well, um, as expected. 
no problems at all with Neo X death between my chemist being able to double everyone's health. So everyone's sitting at like 4,500 health and my bard doing, uh, what do they call it in this version? Heroes rhyme, I think is the song. Um, basically for that one, it's the very last song you get, but it boosts your party members level. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going into that fight as level 30 something and it breaks the level cap. So the level cap is 99. Your level can go all the way up to 255. So you give it a little bit of time and you're like a normal dagger attack is doing like 16,000 to Neo X death. So it's just like you, you're, you're, I, I, uh, my geomancer with a, an air knife was hitting all targets for like 7,000. Like, it's just one of those things where it's like, you're just <laughs> sleeping through that final boss. Um, so that went pretty well. 15 hours on that one. That wasn't bad. Um, I started my... So that was Chaos Berserker Risk was my first one. I figured I'll go the opposite way and I'll just do a regular run. So I'll get mm -hmm. one job assigned to me at every crystal and it'll only be that crystal's job. Um, I got Monk Time... Time Mage, Ranger, and Dragoon. Um, Ranger and Dragoon are both two new jobs for me. I've never gotten either one of those. Um, and they seem fine. I'll do fine because I have a Time Mage. Like that. I'll, once yeah. I get some more spells, I'll I'll sleep through the rest of the game. Um, and Ranger is really interesting because it can. It has a skill. I think it's called Rapid Hit. Where you can hit four times at once. Yeah. Um, the thing I didn't realize is that. So for anyone that hasn't played it, we'll dive a little bit deeper. There's two weapons in the third world. Uh, one, it's called Brave Blade or Chicken Knife. Basically, Brave Blade gets weaker the more uh, battles you run from. But Chicken Knife gets stronger the more battles you run from. And Chicken Knife can get up to 127 attack. Um, so it's it, it's the most powerful weapon in the game. But every once in a while when you attack with Chicken Knife, it will just make you escape the battle. So like there's... I didn't know about that second. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a little bit of, of risk reward there. Obviously you can't run away from some boss battles, but it'll it'll waste a turn. Good news is, Rapid Hit works with chicken blade so you're doing four super powered attacks and it can never proc the escape uh, oh. attack so once i get to world three that's like the very first thing i'm gonna get and power that thing up and apparently just kind of <laughs> sleepwalk through through world three uh so just cast a haste on the ranger too and just yeah exactly <laughs> just hit auto battle and just wait for it to end so uh, i'm i'm pretty excited because i dragoon seems fine um but looking through the notes there doesn't really seem to be a lot to break it with that character it just sort of seems to be like yeah they can wear heavy armor and they hit pretty hard and they can jump so if you know the if you know the AI for enemies, you can sometimes jump out of the way of like a, a death blow attack and then come back in. But that's probably not going to be too much. So uh, Final Fantasy V is still really good. And I am... I'm, I agree. I, I will roll as many runs. I got through four, three and a half runs last year. I'd like to finish four this year um, if I possibly can. Um... Destiny 2, just a quick note, because I know everyone's rolling their eyes already. Um, uh, we're like in the middle of a, a season now, so we're getting modifiers on season activities, like the heroic version of the Menagerie dropped. Haven't run it, probably won't talk about it. Uh, the next big exotic quest is happening next week. It's called Lumina. I have no idea what the details are, uh, but I'll talk about it next week. Um, I did play the Hannah and I play TVGP alumnus. Uh, the Hannah and I play every week, at least uh, at least once a week. Um, and this week was the strongest curse week in Dreaming City, so I took him through um, Shattered Throne and showed him how to do it. And we two man the whole thing. My main goal was to go get the ship that drops from that thing, 
Uh, there's only two things I need left for the Curse Breaker title. One is a pulse rifle I can only get from one Nightfall. That hasn't shown up in, in a long time, so I have to farm that when it shows up. The other one is a ship. Won't you believe it? I get through the whole activity. The ship doesn't drop for me, and I'm sort of bemoaning it at the end, like, man, we... We did it really well. Like we only went in through two men. Like you know, each boss only took us a couple tries. Like the Hannah was doing really great. We were really clicking. And I said, like, man, I just I really want this ship. And he says, Well, what's the ship called? And I was like, I don't I don't really remember. He goes, Is it Palace Galliot? And I was like, If you got it, so help me. <laughs> and he got it. So this is the third time this has happened where I, I am running it through and sort of taking someone through the very first time and they, they get the ship. So you're good luck for other people. Uh, yeah, I really am. Like I just, but what I told, I guess I, I think the Hannah felt a little bit badly, but we'll run it again in three weeks. Um, is the good part is everything else in that, that title is really easy to get except for the, the pulse rifle on the ship. So like, He's like 99% of the way through getting that title. He just needs to do a whole bunch of Dreamy City stuff. And that that's the easy stuff. So he, he already has a leg up on on getting his first title. Mm-hmm. Um, but Destiny 2 is still really great, and I, I played too much. Um, last probably game... Jo- yeah, I'll probably join you in September. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank... Uh, thank yeah. Which uh, I'm, I'm so excited for... It was down... Destiny 2 was down for 12 hours uh, on wednesday this week some thursday this week um because they're starting their back-end maintenance for cross save um and i cannot wait for cross save just to be able to play play with my character on pc at the very least because my video card is good enough i can do 120 frames at 1080p and like it just it's so smooth on pc but like people like you and i that are on opposite platforms can now go onto the other platform and with new light giving access to basically everything yeah. would just hop in and be like, Oh yeah, you want to run some nightfalls or whatever. Like you can just hop on whatever platform your friends are playing on. I'm yep. so excited. So nice. Yeah. Cause like a uh, Jimbo Jango from the community and I've got some of his friends are playing on Xbox one and they don't have PS4 copies. I'm more than happy to, you know, grab new light on Xbox one and, and fire that up. But, I don't have to re-level and like lose all the the cool right. stuff I have. So yeah, very excited. Uh, but my last game this week is Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Um, I am my map completion says eighty percent, like eighty five percent, something like that. Um, I am in the area where the final boss is. Um, I've gone through. I really don't want to spoil it because it's only like a week and a half old, but. In traditional Castlevania style, I have done some steps to get to the final boss, um, <laughs> and I it this game is really good. I think the hard part about it is there have been so many good Metroidvanias, especially over the last couple of years, especially indie ones. Like m- one of my personal favorites is Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, yeah. and I love what some of those games are doing. Like Axiom Verge takes Metrovania's and instead of getting a double jump, you get like this super high single jump. And instead of rolling into a ball and going into places, you, you send out a drone. Like it, it changes the formula up and Hollow Knight takes Metrovania's and sort of smushes together some Dark Souls stuff in a really great way. And Bloodstained is kind of just Symphony of the Night 2. <laughs> and I sort of want to ding it because of that, because it doesn't really reinvent the genre, but it just plays and feels so great that I kind of don't care. And it's it's sort of tough because... I want to say like here's all these other great ones and you should you should definitely go give Hollow Knight a try. It's on PC Game Pass right now. Um you know, there's all these great ones. But Bloodstained is almost like comfort food a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um so it it's sort of tough. Um 
I do have to give uh, huge props to Mental Case from the community. Uh, hit me up on Discord. Those blue sigils I was talking about on the map last week are just me accidentally making notes on the map. Is the thing I was complaining about <laughs> last week, where it's like, man, I wish like Hollow Knight you could ma- mark stuff on the map. You totally can with the circle button, which usually gets you out of the map. Instead, I was hitting the circle button being like, oh, right, I have to hit the touchpad on the PS4 to get out of the map. Just leaving all these little notes all over the map. So thank you, Mental Case. I cleaned those up and I've I've put like two or three of them for places that are really important. Um, And <laughs> Moon and I were talking about the lift shoes from Symphony of the Night last week. Um, lift shoes in Symphony of the Night says it's this it's a dumb joke item where if you you pick them up and you equip them, it says like, oh, it makes Alucard just a little bit taller. It increases his height by one pixel. <laughs> so like, it just, it's just this like dumb joke item. I picked up these concave glasses or convex glasses. I I didn't write them down when I picked them up. And the item says it makes everything look closer. <laughs> when you equip the item, it just zooms in the game. <laughs> So like, it's very much like the lift shoes where it's like, this is useless, but man, this is, this is pretty dumb. I really like it. Um, that's hilarious. Yeah. So I'm, I think, I think I'm like a little bit of 15 hours around there, 15 to 17 hours, um, which is pretty good, uh, length for, for, I think for a Metroidvania like this, um, I, I have unlocked boss rush mode, which I haven't tried doing. And I know once you beat it, like beat the the final boss, I know there's a new game plus that unlocks, but I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. So I'll probably check that out. Everything probably hits harder or something. Yeah. Or like there, everything's a lot higher level than, than you or you carry over all your skills or something. Um, I'll, I'll probably try that out maybe on a, on a different save slot, but I'm really excited. It reminds me a lot of playing Axiom Verge or Hollow Knight or Ori in the, the Blind Forest where it's like, I'm looking forward to finishing this and then I'm looking forward to hundred percenting it. Like I want to see every nook and cranny in this game and I want to get all the wall chickens I can and see all the, the dumb extra rooms and stuff, um, which I haven't felt that that pull in a while for some of these games. So, um, but unfortunately, I didn't play any uh, Outer Wilds this week. I was I was hoping to to play more of that and make some more progress, but uh, I did not have a lot of time this week. Unfortunately, actually, so. actually had a question about. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> what is the game you were just talking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, as someone who ha- I, I've never played Castle uh, Symphony of the Night. Oh, okay. Do you think I should play that before playing Bloodstained? Or should I just um, go straight to Bloodstained? I think you can go straight to Bloodstained. Um, if you want to play Symphony of the Night, it's going to be part of Games with Gold this month. Yeah. Um, so you'll be able to get it for free. I don't uh, I don't remember if it's the... Th- I think it's the 360 version, which is a really good version of Symphony of the Night. Um, so you can get that for free. Bloodstained is 40 bucks, which... Oh, right. I, I think it's a little pricey um, for for this. Me not, I haven't finished the game, so I'm not sure exactly how many you know optional modes there are. So I don't want to say like for sure it should have been thirty or twenty or something. But um, mm-hmm. forty sounds it's a little bit pricey. But um, yeah, I feel like you can't really go wrong either way. Um, okay. I think Bloodstained Symphony of the Night I think is a really really well designed game it's just a really tight experience um, I think Bloodstained does that and takes um, the shard system which it carries over from the like the last Game Boy Advance um, uh, Castlevania game where you're absorbing the skills of your enemies and then using those as equipable skills oh, yeah. um, so that's it has that on top of it that Symphony of the Night didn't have. Um, but yeah, I, either one, I, I would say. I, I, Symphony of the Night, you should probably play at some point because it's, it's one of those classic, like almost yeah. required reading games. I probably will. But yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. will when it gets comes free. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had looked up. I'll look it up uh, during the break. We're going to talk about during releases. Um, about the, I think that's the notable release for uh, uh, Games with Gold this month. Yeah. 
Uh, but that's all I've been playing, so let's take a break. Let's talk releases for the week of July 1st, 2019. Uh, previous section here, 30 seconds ago for, for most of you, uh, talking about uh, Games with Gold for July 2019. Uh, Inside is uh, the other big release. Go play that. It's really great. We did a game club on that a couple months ago. Um, Symphony of Night is available from July 1st to July 15th. Um, so go scoop that up if you haven't played it. It's really great. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers comes out PC and PS4. Uh, everybody's really excited about this. <laughs> I'm really excited about it, and I haven't played FF14 in so long. <laughs> yeah, what was the last uh, expansion I, I you played? Even, I didn't even get to the expansion, to be honest. Like, uh, I, oh, I, okay. I played during like a trial, like a 14-day trial, and I didn't even get. But that game is so fun. Yeah, I, uh, people's excitement over this. Uh, especially with there was like a trial or a beta or something this past week um and man i really wish i had some time to play this game because i i really think i'd like it and i just, I just wish i had time to invest in another game like this yeah um, but i played world of warcraft and i put that down for a reason so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Stranger Things 3, the game, comes out PC, Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. I think this is that like, retro 16-bit yeah, thing I that they so. teased a while ago. Um, I, I'm assuming that Stranger Things Season 3 is also coming out pretty soon. So uh, no probably idea. probably this week. It's probably out now. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and last... Want- I never watched Stranger Things. Yeah, I, though, so I, I, I haven't made it to that. I, someone said it was a little spooky, and I was like, okay, well, I, I'll, I'll have to wait on that one because I'm just a giant chicken. Uh, and lastly, a game I've been looking forward to since they showed it at E3 2018, 2017, uh, Sea of Solitude comes out PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Um, that was that cool game by the, I think, French studio where the woman came on stage and they showed the the lady in the rowboat and everything is submerged and is the big monsters underwater and oh, looks right that one where it's like people become monsters if they get too lonely and i was like yeah man all right put it in my veins let's let them that's just i'm i'm ready for this one uh so that comes out this week i've had that pre-order on ps4 for a while and i'm i'm very excited to, to check that out hopefully we hear about it next week yeah exactly probably as long as as long as it downloads correctly and nothing totally explodes <laughs> uh all right news stories no gear packs no and no season pass for gears five um this is the the second high profile game in the last couple of weeks this and call of duty uh that have both said like hey man we're not gonna do like season passes or map packs or stuff like this you know we've got the roadmap of of free content um this seems an awful lot like some of the bigger games are doing away with season passes i think that's and that's really interesting and i'm i'm sort of curious what's driving that um maybe bad press about well in particular the star wars game it's like yeah that's true well there there been the thing i could think of there've been so many games too where it's like all right here's a $60 game but the $80 version is the one you really want and the $110 one comes with all that cool stuff and the season pass so it's like no game is really $60 anymore there's just 20 or 30 or 40 more so um I'm, I think my big question is does Borderlands 3 still have a season pass cuz that was Borderlands 1 and 2 were really the the gold standard for season passes for the longest time. It's like they're they're a fair price. The amount of content is is outrageous. Um I feel like Borderlands 3 has has put its has drawn a line in the sta- sand saying like it's not a 
a games as a service game. It's not, it doesn't have loot boxes. Like it has microtransactions sort of now infamously. <laughs> um, but you know, they're, they're really putting a line in the sand saying it's not, we're not making a, a new games as a service game. So it's going to be interesting to see sort of what happens there. And if they can, if they can sell a, a season pass That's for that. I feel yeah. like, they will have a season pass just because the first two have them. Then. Yeah, it's like an expectation at this point in a really weird yeah. way. Like, oh, you don't have a season pass. Like, mm, how much am I going to pay for all the content? You know, it's going to be. Yeah. But we're we're getting close to to uh, uh, Borderlands three launching. I think that's like September thirteenth or something like that. It's like three September. or f- yeah, it's like yeah. three or four days before before Destiny Shadowkeep. Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, my, my apologies. Which, by the way, is a standalone expansion for Destiny 2. You don't have to own anything else. Uh, wink. <laughs> uh, next news story. Google doesn't expect games on Stadia to be cheaper than consoles. Uh, Stadia chief Phil Harrison says, quote, I don't know why it would be cheaper, end quote. Uh, which <laughs> you, you can't I, mince words there. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. It, it's it's a hard sell because uh, he continued later and said like, "Hey, we ex- we believe that we at, at Stadia believe that we can charge a premium price price because you get to play these games anywhere: your phone, your Chromecast, your TV, like their famous thing of you know, and all these devices lined up and play 4K. But as a consumer, it's really hard to see Game Pass and ea access and netflix and all these other services where you just pay that monthly cost and you get access to a a library of some size then with stadia saying you need to do both you need to pay that monthly cost for the 4k option there's obviously the, the free 1080p option and on top of that pay for games and on top of that you don't own the games that's that's a hard sell. Yeah, it really is. Like, I I probably would never pay for Stadia <laughs> at this point. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the the free version, and I'll try it out. I probably won't use it that much, but yeah. yeah and I I think it's to to compound a hard sell on top of a hard sell for people like us. If you're on or listening to the show, we already have at least one if not most of the consoles that are out right now probably a gaming pc probably you know a smartphone full of games or tablet full of games so stadia is a hard sell because i can buy a disc and put it in my ps that's a bad example because my ps4's disc drive doesn't want to (laughs) work i could buy a disc and put it in my xbox one or i can buy a cart and put it in my switch and that'll work and i own it so and especially this coming on on the back of uh all of telltale's games just disappearing even if you've already owned them like it it, it's sort of tough and i think phil also said quote we're definitely in a great moment of transition and inflection in the industry going from an ownership consumption model not every developer and publisher is ready to move to subscription yet end quote and it's really interesting to hear him say like I know you guys like owning stuff, but how 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 much would you like if you didn't? <laughs> it's just sort of like, well, I I don't think I would. Um, so I I think it will be really interesting. I'm in the same boat you are, monkey. Where I'm I'm gonna wait for. I think that hundred thirty dollar thing. I have an unlimited data cap here for my internet home so like and i'm i'm in san diego like i'm i'm their target market i was ready to scoop that a uh, scoop up that 130 dollar founders pack until i heard it was buy games and pay for the service and i yeah. i can't do that like i i there's there's no not enough money in the budget <laughs> yeah and like uh, if if it was like a game pass thing where it's like you know, you pay your ten dollars a month, and you get access to like maybe one or two games for like a two to month, two to three month period. 
I could I could probably be talked into that because I could try out these games and maybe they're not on Game Pass but they're on Stadia. Like it's like yeah. it, it's like, I was just looking at uh, my PC and I was like trying to catalog what I have on Steam versus Epic versus GOG versus Twitch. You know, like it right. with all these different platforms, you probably own the game you want to play on something, but I don't want to have to pay for it on top of that. I think. I think that's going to be tough. So we'll see. I I guess the we'll try out the free version, and it's probably going to land March of next year, like everything else is going to. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see at that point. Uh, speaking of subscription services, EA Access launches on PS4 July 24th. It's going to be five dollars a month or thirty dollars a year. I had to read that a couple of times because why would you not pay for the year? Because you save like half the price. <laughs> Yeah. So that that's it, at thirty dollars a year. That's still pretty cheap too. Yeah. Um. Uh. And it says you'll get the library of electronics, arts, games, and a discount on microtransactions. The bummer is that's just a couple weeks away, and we still don't know what games are going to be on EA Access. Um. So they haven't really said other than yeah, the Xbox One version has you know fifty games, but the Xbox One version supports 360 backwards compatible games as well, mm-hmm. but the PS4 doesn't support PS3 backwards compatible games. So, not entirely sure how that's going to affect the uh, the overall library. Hopefully, at least most things. Yeah, <laughs> maybe I've... not like the most recent thing, but yeah. And I feel like if you for thirty dollars a year, if there's like twenty to thirty games on there at any time that still feels like a pretty great value. And you can, yeah. you can, there's like the 10 hour, uh, trials you can do of like Anthem is on there and there's some other games you can do the 10 hour trial for. So that's, that, that seems like a pretty, a pretty good deal. Um, yeah. as we talked about during E3 with you play plus though, sort of a lot of subscription services going on right now, not only just like the TV and movie stuff, but also everyone's getting in the uh, game subscription service. So, mm-hmm. That sort of stinks. Uh, And last news story here, just sort of closing the loop on 2018, 2019's one of craziest stories. Uh, The Fallout 76 nylon bag, duffel bag saga finally comes to a close. Uh, Everyone who bought the Power Armor edition of the game and uh, has finally gotten their actual canvas bag now instead of a uh, cheap nylon bag. So one <laughs> one of the craziest and twisty turniest uh, news stories uh, of probably the last year. It's so weird. We're finally free. With the bags are in hand, way after anyone would care about them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so many people are Not getting people them, can... and they're just like, I don't care about the bag anymore. It's the principle, but I don't care about the bag anymore. Yeah. Now people can stop playing Fallout 76. That's right. They haven't already. <laughs> That's right. Now they have the bag, like their service is done. You you can put it away. The wait wait until the NPCs come back and then you can you can pick it back up. <laughs> uh but we don't have any questions this week. Probably everyone's gearing up for the uh, July 4th long weekend. Um, so that's our episode this week. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Uh, everyone will find and follow us on the right hand side of the page, patreon.com slash e1m1. Uh, that's, uh, where you can check out all our behind the scenes, outcast stuff, early access to dynamic soundtrack and ODNF. Uh, the $5 a month tier is, uh, the one I recommend that gets you all the stuff. It's only five bucks a month. I can't even get like a frosty in California for $5. <laughs> Like that's right. it's cheap. Um, uh, what brand new episode of Old Dog New Flicks? Go vote uh, at the Patreon uh, for uh, uh, the brand new Arnie episode. Uh, Moon Pier will remind you there's only one uh, right choice. I think it'll be open open for probably this whole next week. I forgot to get it on my calendar. Um, go listen to Monkey Moon and I on We Rogue Like It uh, as our weekly rogue like show. Uh, right now we are uh, playing Don't Starve. If you're a patron, we're wrapping that up, and we've just announced the uh, the brand new game that I promise was picked by actual randomization, not just be saying I want to play more of this game. Um, so go listen to that to see what it is. 
Uh, and I think that's it. Monkey, where's your, uh, let's do a plug for your uh, Twitch channel. What's your Twitch name? Oh, it's uh, twitch.tv slash monkey senior underscore. There you go. No, no space between the monkey and the senior. There you go. Watch him go play usually whatever we're playing on We Rogue Like It. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and thank you very much everyone for listening we'll see you all next week bye I have four titles this week did you write any down? I did okay why don't we start with yours I only remembered after I stopped talking about oh. that <laughs> I was like oh yeah that's yeah. thing <laughs> well, I got a chicken knife gets stronger well that's uh, good one. Rolling into a ball and going places. Uh, Symphony of the Night 2. And I'm just a giant chicken. I am a really big chicken. I'm just... Uh, I have... Moon says there's only one choice. Uh, 2019's longest title. Uh, I'm terrible at level design. Uh, Chicken Knife Gets Stronger. And one of my personal favorites, Whoops, Dark Souls. (laughs) I like Whoops Dark Souls and Chicken Knife Gets Stronger. Uh, Do you feel uh, strongly about either one of those? No, either either one's fine. I'll do... Let me search. TVGP Dark Souls. I feel like we haven't done... Episode 541 is titled Frogger Dark Souls. That's the... (laughs) only dark souls <laughs> title we've had i'm gonna pick whoops dark souls because that's just it's dumb and it's perfect for our show <laughs> okay uh do you want to do a, a little quip it's optional if you don't want to do one uh i think i got something okay uh let's get started in three two one this is That Video Game Podcast, episode 610 for July 1st, 2019. Whoops. Dark Souls. You died. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. And you can stop recording.